for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I want to thank the witnesses for being here. This is an important issue. It was an important issue to President Obama in uh, July of 2010. He signed a bill, the Improper Payments Elimination and Recovery Act, because it's um, a drain on our resources. Every dollar that we send out in improper payments is not just a dollar. It's a dollar plus interest because we're operating in deficit. So it puts a, 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 a huge constraint on our ability to, to fund the... Um, the legitimate functions of government. Uh, it's a concept that's easy to understand. An improper payment is any payment that was made improperly, including payments made to the wrong person for the wrong amount, to ineligible recipients, and without supporting documentation. As a matter of fact, uh, in the GAO's report, 54% uh, of the improper payments that were made were uh, because of insufficient documentation and inability to authenticate eligibility. That's not a, a uh, heavy lift to uh, correct that. What's hard to understand is how the federal government uh, reported 144 billion of improper payments last year, 11 billion of which was they didn't pay people enough, leaving 134.7 billion in overpayments. Since reporting began in fiscal year 2004, the federal government has reported 1.2 trillion in improper payments. And I would like to add again, Mr. Chairman, that would be plus interest. Unfortunately, the Department of Education, specifically the Office of Federal Student Aid, has tended in the same direction as the rest of the federal government in regards to increasing improper payments. It is a good place to start to dig into this growing problem. I'd also like to point out that in uh, 2016, uh, GAO found several examples of contract mismanagement that have led to confusion, confusion among the student loan services. Uh, GAO has specifically highlighted concerns over the quality of communications and unclear guidance from FSA to the servicers. Department of Education Inspector General is here to report for the third straight year the department is not in compliance with Improper Payments Elimination and Recovery Act of 2010, as I pointed out, legislation that the president signed uh, in July of 2010. By law, agencies are required to conduct uh, risk assessments to determine if programs are susceptible to significant improper payments. Susceptible programs must report a statistically valid estimate of improper payments and other details about the causes and corrective actions taken by the agency. The IG has reported concerns about the methodology the department uses to develop the estimate. The IG has also reported that the department has not conducted effective risk assessments or used the risk assessments to appropriately designate programs. These failures are particularly concerning given the amount of money at risk. Last year, the department reported more than $6 billion of improper payments from just two programs, direct loans and Pell Grants. The Office of Management Budget has designated both programs as high-priority programs, which means they are among the 20 programs with the highest rates of improper payments in the federal government. However, the estimate that the department reports is based on flawed methodology. The department admits as much in its annual financial report, which says the department acknowledges that its alternative esti estimation methodology can lead to volatile and proper payment estimates. How can we understand the risk and taxpayer dollars at stake when the department is unable to provide effective estimates? The department needs to take responsibility for the taxpayer dollars vested in the agency and do better. The department reports that the improper payments are primarily a result of a failure to verify financial data and administrative errors made outside of the department. Correction, the problem is the department is responsible for the money. The department is responsible for developing, developing effective processes. The department is responsible for ensuring that the schools and the students understand the process and that the process is not overly burdensome. We are here today to begin the process of helping the department to assume this responsibility since it appears unable to do so on its own. We can't begin to fix the growing problem of improper payments across the government until agencies follow suit, and I look forward to working with my colleagues to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. I thank the gentleman for his opening statement. The uh, chair recognized the gentleman from Virginia, the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Government Operations, Mr. Conley. I thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman.